The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Hello, my name's James Wrigley. I'm a financial advisor and one of the principals of Melbourne-based financial planning firm, First Financial. I've been a long-term listener and contributor to the Ensemble Group and podcast, picking up some amazing nuggets of gold over the years. And through this podcast and the people that I'm able to speak to and interview, hopefully I can continue to deliver some of those nuggets of gold to you. First Century Investors Believe actively targeting Australia's growth engine. High quality growing companies listed on the ASX is the secret to beating the market. Since 1993, every wholesale fund managed by its Australian equities growth team has outperformed the share market over the long term. They believe high quality growing companies can power tax effective, geared, X20 and concentrated portfolios. Thinking about new ways to target Australian share market growth Think first, send your investors. Past performance not indicative of future performance. Net of fees as at August 2024. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. I have the pleasure of speaking with Fran Hughes, seasoned financial advisor who's on a mini retirement. Fran, we've been uh, trying to tee this up for a little while. You're in New York when I first reached out to you. So thank you for, uh, for, for getting this in the diary so we can have a chat. Thanks for joining me, Fran. Hello, James. Oh my goodness. What, what no, not many people would know is that I've been a fan of yours for a long time. Uh-huh. Since we were on the Financial Standard Top 50 Most Influential Financial Advisor list, and since then I've been watching you, you've been a podcaster, uh, you've been a guest lecturer, your business is going well, and my goodness, at the at this moment in time, your socials are also just exploding. So congratulations, James. We were just talking about a video that I posted and for anyone that's doing it, I don't know to deal about it, but <laughs> for anyone that is doing videos on social media, talk about inheritance. Like I did one about um, inheriting mum or dad's house. It's Tuesday afternoon when we were, when we were recording this. I posted it on Sunday and my on Facebook it's got like half a million views, 250,000 on Instagram and uh, it's gone, gone crazy. So anyway, tip for you and tip for anyone else that might be listening. But thanks, thanks, Fran. And, and right back at you, Greta. Great to have you on and, and, and have a chat. So, tell us about your your journey in financial advice because you're you're on a mini retirement right now. Well, I want to get to that and what that's all about. But <laughs> bef- before that, what what's your journey in financial advice been like? Look, you know, if I if I think back to when I first started, and by the way, it, our vintage is quite different. So, I mm-hmm. believe you've just had a birthday. Yes, happy birthday. <laughs> And uh, I'm a few years older than you. So if I think back to when I first started way back in in the 80s, you know, we, we didn't have a compulsory super. We didn't have the what we see right now. What we did have was your national mutuals, your endowment policies, et cetera. Hmm. So for me – what kind of you know really was my uh, my passion and and trigger to jump into financial planning if i think back to my first client now my first client and by the way i love working with business owners so that's kind of my 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 lane way business yes. owners who uh, are time poor you know they don't quite understand what's going on with their profit and loss statement they're trying to make ends meet and finance is just a little bit overwhelming. Mm. So if if I think back to my first client, they weren't too too different. It was a mum and dad who own a corner deli, working really long hours. She looked after the six kids at home whilst he looked after running the the, the deli and making sure that the books were all good and tickety boo. Yeah. But they were losing money. And of course what happens as you and I know, James, is that when you when you're in a position of uh, lack your 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 mindset does is not working for you and so everything is becoming a little bit more chaotic a bit, bit more overwhelming so being a newbie at this I thought okay I'm going to use all my my tools at, at hand and my knowledge and I put out my spreadsheet and started working through okay what what are the numbers what are the numbers coming in what are the numbers going out by the way I was an A student at math so I figured I'd, I'd use that as a yeah. starting point and then I move along and, and then we started working out okay there are ways to be able to get a positive outcome on this so 
income versus expenses. You should be in a surplus rather than a deficit. We worked on that, and within 30 days, they got to a place where the chaos was no longer there, and they could actually see more money coming in than going out. Mm-hmm. And then the second part, over 60 days, started to make uh, you know make ends meet, and then they, within 12 months, they were in a much, much better place, so much so that they got to to retire quite comfortably and, and lived a real fulfilling life. Now, if I think back to that first client – that client was my mum and dad, and I was at the age of 14. I saw that. Oh, where did I read that? Where did I read that on something you sent me before? You said, yeah. Yeah, and, okay. And, and, and that started me on a journey of, you know, I want to do this, and I want to make more and more people really, really get to a position where they can retire, they can live a fulfilled life. Yeah. And so I went on to, to build uh, several financial planning businesses. So I, I built it. Uh, they were award-winning. I sold them, and I've had three mini retirements along the way. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's it's interesting that you you've so, you've sold the financial advice business and then kind of gone back into a financial advice business by, by the sound of things. <laughs> so others, that I've got one of my clients who used to be in financial advice. He's like, I had enough of it. He gone out of it, and he's gone and done something completely different. What what's made you what's made you decide to sell a business and then go back to doing a similar kind of business that you were doing be, beforehand? Yeah, it, that's a great question. I guess you know when when we look at and in, it, we look at, at the life stages of, of clients that we've, we've been working with, yeah. and and we go, okay, how can I help this particular client? More often, than not, what I find is that if if they're uh, working through problems that I'm also experiencing myself, I can be. I'm in the best position as a professional to be able to help them. Yeah. So the first financial planning business that I that I had, I had that for 14 years, and what that looked like was, you know, this was these would have been mums and dads, uh, business small business owners who were also who had young families. I had a young family, yeah. and they pretty much just wanted to to make ends meet. They want to get into a good financial position and get to a point where they can sell out of their business. Yeah. You know, by the way, I take a lot of lessons from my clients. They yeah. they think that you know I'm the one giving them the advice, but more often than not, I'm taking a lot of you know what to do and what not to do from them. So at that point in time, I decided actually my two daughters had grown up uh, by this stage, and so my business had also grown up. Mm. And I truly believe in order for me to, as a an effective financial planner to be able to give sound advice, I've got to actually step into my client's shoes. So I've been saying for so long, you should you should retire. So I should really actually retire. And that's the reason for my first sale. Yeah. And and why did I jump back in? It, it, and you you'll agree with this, you know, why would do we do what we do? We love it. We, mm. we, we make such a, a difference to clients' lives. What I found then is all my learnings from my previous business, I can now implement into my new business. Yep. And what would have I would have achieved over 14 years, I actually achieved in five years. Yeah. And so that that taught me that actually now what all my failures and my learnings from my previous business, I can really put it into the new business and then also make a point of, Actually, there has to be an exit point, and I always kind of carve my my next season or my next chapter in chunks of five. Yeah, okay. Did you find like so your your first business was people that were kind of like you? Sounds like a yeah. similar age, similar life stage, that kind of thing. And <laughs> over fourteen years, if some of those clients were with you over that time, everyone's got a bit older. When you went back the second time, was it young people with young families or, or was it people that were around a similar kind of life stage where you were in in that second business? Yeah, g- a great point. In, in fact, that's right. So I pivoted to more high net wealth, more um, clients who, who had been seasoned business owners. And at yeah. that point in time, they, their pain point was two things, succession planning or how do I sell my business? Mm. And so I was able to really add value in that space for them to be able to then navigate a sale of their business and then retire. Yeah. It's an interesting way to do that because like I've had other guests on the podcast where they're working in businesses that, that, are, that are dealing with that kind of younger demographic, that accumulation type, type client, and they're doing a lot of work around insurance and Home loans and you know setting up super basically and, and and some and some stuff and I often pose the question to them to say do you think 
and, and often the advisors are of a similar age and a similar stage mm-hmm. of life too, as, as, as you've just explained. I often pose the question to them to say, do you think your clients will age up with you as you get, get older? Mm-hmm. It'd be hard. I hadn't kind of thought of it and you've put the idea in my head to say, well, if you've set up a business that works with a client that's 35 years old and they've got a young family and a mortgage and a this and a that, mm-hmm. you've got processes and procedures in place to deal with that type of client. How do you then all of a sudden go to, and it's not going to happen overnight, but how do you then all of a sudden go to dealing with the 55-year-old that's exited a business and has got a bit of cash in the bank and they've paid off their mortgage and all the rest of it? You, that's different client, different processes. Different your, prices, different cl- and, and different, different communication channels too. Yeah. So we think about social media and, and the the younger demographic that that are really picking up the the languaging and and the um, the knowledge piece that you're putting out into the world. They they're there. But if we think about say our mums and dads, you know, my, my dads, uh, my mum and dad were accumulators. So. You know, War, uh, World War Two era, and then you've got baby boomers who think very differently. Yeah, when when running a business, what I've learned is you've got to be in this in this headspace that they're in, and mm. and the channel, the communication channel that they would actually, um, you know, adapt to. Yep. So that's kind of how a business could could pivot. Yeah, yeah it's an interesting way to do it to say you know you eventually get to a point where I'm I'm done working with this type of client. That's not me anymore. Mm-hmm. But instead of trying to time to evolve that current business, because then you've got this idea, you know, you've spoken to others where they get into a point where it's like, hey, this isn't the ideal client that we're working with anymore, and then this and they and they're somehow nicely trying to get that client to exit the business in some way, shape, yeah. or form. Yeah. But instead, just sell the business to someone else that wants to look after that type of client, and then yeah. start again doing doing it differently. I also recognise that having been in this profession for many years is that. Now more than ever, clients still need the professional advice. But now more than ever, we've got less advisors that are registered yeah. and more are clients that need our help. So m- mine's only an example of how I went about it. There are many other really successful business owners that have mm-hmm. adapted within their business where they've grown and they've created a whole section that would look after that demographic and then they'll move on to another area that they would feel really comfortable with. Yeah. Hey, can you can you talk about like the, the, the running of those businesses in terms of people that you had involved? Then? Like was it was it just you? Did you have other advisors? Did you have some other support staff? Like, what what, what was involved in those couple of businesses that you've solved? Yeah, the, so the the two, the businesses that are are built up are pretty much in partnership with other uh, another accounting firm. So that's I my know. forte. I love working with with accountants because yeah. they've got that technical knowledge. I, I guess it's the the uh, IQ, and I've yeah. got the EQ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I sit there and like I talk to to a client about their their aspirations and their goals and their their five year plan and up upwards to their ten year plan. So with with that in mind, because because I am in a business with several other um, business owners, yeah. I also sort of carve out well where is my value at, and and when I get to a point where where I've also set up a plan for myself. And if at that point in time I've got to make some decisions whether I want to continue this or am I happy to to say you know what I've I've made myself redundant, which is fantastic by the mm-hmm. way. In a business, if you've built a business from start to the end, and you can hand on heart say, okay, if I'm going to step away from this business and it doesn't totally rely on me, you've done an amazing job. Yeah, fantastic. How how long did you have off between in your in your mini retirements? How long did you have off each time? Yes, it's, it's typically two years. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And and so you're into another mini retirement now. How, how far are you into your, into your current one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I sit here and I'm I'm actually two months into it. Oh, but, you know, <laughs> I guess I laugh a little because uh, the definition of a, a mini retirement is very different for, for everybody. And so mm-hmm. for me, when my, my brain's constantly working, I, I truly – love working with with people so therefore my next season's gonna what that's gonna look like is um networking and talking to to people like yourself being making myself available for podcasts making myself available for speaking gigs etc and i'm actually right in in this myths uh, also working on uh, writing my book so i'm oh, just gonna, I'm with yeah. the pen to paper 
<laughs> so that so I was going to ask what 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 are you up to at the moment? So if you're not working in financial advice, there's there some of the things that that you're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you just as I said at the start, you were you were in New York at the time that that I reached out to you. Can you talk a bit about your your trip to New York yeah. or to America in general? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So as part of Stepping into a mini retirement, what what I have found is, and research also suggests this, is that um, a large majority of of retirees step into retirement not knowing what they're going to do, mm. and and my encouragement to them is not to necessarily step into retirement and then step into just that daily. Uh, routine. Rather, there are four steps that I would suggest that they consider. The first one is to make it a holiday. Uh, you know, a go on a, on a, a holiday, a vacation, etc. It feels like you're on your long service leave, for example. And then when you do, and, and that's what the US uh, trip was about. So I finished on the 4th of September and I jumped on the plane on the 5th of September oh. <laughs> to the US. And, and I was hosted by the Insight Network. And the Insight Network, what, why I love working with, with them is because they're very much a community base. And what that allowed me to do is also to step into uh, the next chapter where I've got the ability to learn about something that's bigger than what I've been used to. Uh, the trip took us to the US where we, we met JP Morgan. We, we met with uh, quite a few big names, investment houses in, in New York, yeah. and uh, we got hosted by a few in, in Boston as well. We got to go to MIT and Harvard, and that really opened up my eyes as far as the universe of financial services, not just based in Australia, but based outside of what we know. Yeah, okay. And and that's my encouragement to any retiree. If they if they do step into retirement, is to one go on a holiday, but two don't forget your learnings. You, you want to be able to expand your mind and start hmm. thinking about your next chapter. Okay, you, you right. I'm I'm interested in your four your four steps of retirement thing that you that you alluded to. So the first one's go on a holiday. What am I yeah, doing next? Do that. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 then the second step is, is to uh, consider. A, also learning. So yeah. I, I like to refer to it as your pause for growth. So you're pausing as far as the daily grind and you're actually looking at learnings. What else can I learn from this and how can I grow as one, as a professional, as a person, uh, etc. And then the third po- the third one is don't forget your health. You know, health is wealth yeah. in, in my mind. And if, if we think back to, you know, the, the, the triangle uh, – and the the triangle of time, wealth, and health. Have you seen mm. that at all? Yeah. So so when you're in your twenties, you've got all the time in the world, you've got all the health in the world, but you don't have your, your wealth. You're really, really, really working yeah, really yeah. hard to, to get there, yeah. and then go to the very end. You've suddenly now got a limited amount of time. Yes, you've, you hope if you've been working with a financial planner, you'd have your wealth, and all and also maybe you don't have as much of your health. And that's why I do I do recommend a mini retirement because if you can take a mini retirement in your 30s, 40s and 50s, you've you've also got your health to be able to do mm-hmm. all the things that, that you wanted to do. To do. Yeah. So that's your third step. And then your fourth step is your legacy piece. What what do you want what do you want to do um as far as you know whether it's a side hustle, whether it is volunteering because it's the sense of belonging. You know, if we if we don't if we don't get to a space of finding our next community, our next tribe, what would happen is you know loneliness, boredom might set in, and they're the four key steps. Yeah, as I said, Barry Lavalley because you come across Barry Lavalley. Barry Lavalley has passed away now, but he used to talk about this idea. And it's like I've heard it years and years ago. It would have been when I first started in financial advice about this idea of you know, holidays are a break from. The routine of work, mm-hmm. but what do you do when, like, all of your time is vacation time? When you've got nothing else to do, what what do you do to actually break up the nothingness or of, of a potential retirement if you haven't planned it out like you like you're talking about? What are you going to do to keep yourself your mind active, keep learning, keep stimulated, keep contributing to the community? Um, outside of just sitting on the couch watching TV all day, <laughs> totally, totally. And there's so there's just so many learnings from from clients as well as 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 my um, my mum and dad. Now my, my I just recently one of the reasons also I I did 
decide on a mini retirement at this point in time at age 55 was because I just recently lost my father-in-law and then mm. I, and I also did, did lose my, my dad two years ago. It just kind of brings home, and you've seen that with your clients as well, is that sometimes when, when we decide to work, 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 and then retire, our time – we actually don't know how much time we've got for retirement. It could be five years, it could be 10 years, it could be 20 years. Yeah. So to that end, I'm on a mission and I'm obsessed with it. I'm on a mission for financial planners to start thinking outside the box. What does the modern retirement look like? Yeah. Is it just work, work, work and just build up your, your, your super? Or is it, could we help them with building out their wealth so that they now tick off a couple of boxes such as, you know, what is the uh, kind of a life list? that they have and how can we help them tick off that box to be able mm. to live life at its fullest because we know that we're living longer and we can work longer. So if we really start shaking up financial planning to incorporate breaks, you know, the, the story of young couples jumping into a caravan, travelling around Australia for a whole yeah. 12 months – and you go, oh, Jesus, no income. This, how are you going to fund it? But I tell you what, the the wealth of experience in that twelve months with them, their kids, you can't quantify that. Mm. It's qu- quality versus quantity. You got to st- you got to think about that as financial planners. Have you, in in your work as a financial advisor, have you helped anyone through that? Like, if you influence them that much with what you've done yourself, and and how how are you helping that? young couple that's buying the caravan and touring around Australia for a year, how are you helping them prepare for that? Oh, look, that that's the part I, I love doing because I love actually just pushing someone in and start talking about what, if if money wasn't an issue, what would you do? Mm. What, would, what would your goals and aspirations look like? So I want to take away kind of that that idea that money is, is a, a, a kind of a, uh, you know, a, a chain around your your, your ankles and, and start thinking about what if money was an issue, what would you do? And and so a client of mine, um, Claire and David, and Claire and David always wanted to live in Italy for 12 months. Yeah. And they've, they had one daughter. And the, the daughter, Chloe, at the point, at that point in time, she was, uh, she was only three years old. And they knew they only had this window. And that window was before Chloe had to go to kindy, they could take a year off. Mm. So we worked to we worked together on a plan to be able to fund that whole twelve months in Italy to for them to be able to live there for twelve months and then come back and and, and you know it's almost like it was a, a beautiful experience, but it didn't impact their financial position. So that there is a there is a thing I'm not sure if you've heard. Um, there is a movement called Fire that is financial yes. independence retirement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now one of the things that I agree with Fi is that you've got to pay yourself now and live frugally. But what I don't agree with is, and this is what I refer to, that mini does not mean skinny. So what that looks like is that I I always ref, I always work on the eighty twenty rule. Fire works on the you know you've you've got to save up sixty percent of of your income. So that you can retire early, I yeah. say eighty twenty rule. If you can, if you can put away twenty percent somehow, you might not need the the brand new car. You might not need uh, those, uh, it, you know, the the new TV and the, the expenses. If you can go without for four years and you've put away twenty percent, imagine how much you've put away. You've actually put away a whole year's worth of your income. You yeah. just take it off months off. Yeah, that's how we do it. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic, and so so are you, it sounds like you're in a, a movement to try and change the outlook for retirement. What are you what are you, what are you going to do? How are you going to do that? Well, firstly, I'm going to write that book, <laughs> and and I'm gonna I'm gonna take a a leaf out of your social uh, social book as well and start posting videos because I I've really you know I I'm actually Gen X and you're a Gen Y, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's right. I'm not sure what generation I am. I'm, I think I'm just at the very end of one or the very beginning of another. I don't know. I can never work it out. I Google it and I can never remember what I, what I am. So, Gen G- X, this is what we refer to as Digilog. That, that is, we've got uh, um, digital minds and analog hearts. And, and what that looks like is for me to show up on a video is probably ste- for me stepping out of my comfort zone, but that's something I've got to do. I reckon you'll be good at it. Don't, 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 uh, yeah, you'll be, you'll be good at it. 
Let me know. I'll uh, I'll be there commenting and liking and sharing your stuff. <laughs> so what? So what's next for you? Do, you? do you think there's another gig in financial advice left it left in you? Another starting another business at some point? Yeah. Um, okay. So you know, as 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 business natural business owners, we we start to percolate on on the future of advice. What does the future of advice look like? Mm. And I've seen the traditional advice piece back in the day, insurance advisors, and then we've got you know, the uh, full-fledged holistic financial planners and and now we're seeing influencers. But I truly believe there is a space for financial coaches. Mm. And so what that looks like is uh, – and I like working with, with business owners who are family stewards. So, and the definition of a family steward is someone who has the family office front of mind looking at next generations and next generations. So you talk about the intergenerational wealth transfer. I feel that there is definitely a need now to move into that space where our knowledge piece as advisors would be more of a a sounding board, more of a coach. We don't – and then we can leave kind of that portfolio management to someone else. But where we truly sit is just to be the the voice of reason to someone who's making such big decisions around their family estate – and, and their family future. Okay. Yep. And so that's on the drawing board for you next, is it? Oh, I'm with your book's done. Let's have a look at that. You know, check in with me in two years. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so we, so you you mentioned 30s, 40s, and 50s. I don't know whether that was a passing comment before, but was that roughly the timing of the of the, of the the mini breaks that you had? One was in your 30s, one was in your 40s, and now in your, in your 50s you've got the third one? Certainly, yeah. yeah. So, so my yeah. first meeting break was was uh, when I was thirty, yeah, and uh, and that was that was uh, twelve months. So it wasn't necessarily a, a two year, but it was twelve months. Yeah. And then the next one was in my in my forties, mm. and that was a two year break. So this is really cool, right? So at that point in time, when I was in my forties, my husband and I had been together for thirty years. So we figured, you know, as part of our mini break, let's kind of put something up there and say let's let's achieve that. Natural yeah. financial planners. So we've been together for 30 years, so we thought we'd go and discover 30 destinations for 30 years we've been together. <laughs> <laughs> How long did that take you to do your 30 Two destinations? Years. <laughs> <It's-> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's fantastic. It, and it's- now I'm in my 50s, yeah. It's so it, it, it's so interesting talking to you now. As I, I caught up with a kind of a bit of a mentor of mine last week and we're talking about a, a, a few bits and pieces that, that, that I've got going on in, in, in my life. Uh, and, it, and he said, James, if, if there was, it's like, how old are your kids? And I told him how old my kids are. And he's like, ah, it's like, oh, mine are a bit older than yours now. Now they're getting into the serious end of high school. He's like, if I, uh, he's like, if I could do anything again, it's like, I'd encourage it to you. He's like, just quit and like go, you know, take six months off, take 12 months off. He's like, just go live in Queensland to, you know, for, for a year or go, in a, go to Europe for six months or, or whatever. He's like, School for your kids will still be there. It's fine, you know. You'll you work it out. I'm sure you can. You know, you you'll be okay. You would go okay for a year. And I was sitting there going, "Wow, I, I never even thought of doing that." And you've actually lived it. And I, and I came home and told my wife, and she's like, "No, nah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to miss, miss that." But but just to even have that idea like for someone to say it out loud to me, and then obviously yeah. talking to you that you've actually lived that life for you know for for a while there, that it is possible. But we just it's not. This finish uni, get a job, work until you're sixty years old, and then retire with a big super balance, and then off you go. We need to uh, need to stop and pause a little bit more often. Oh yeah, I, I I agree with you there. And don't get me wrong, as financial planners, to be financially supported is at the heart of what we do. But there are ways to do it. It's mm. not. It doesn't have to be the traditional save, 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 and then get to sixty five and then stop. We can save, enjoy it, smell the roses a bit, and then save again. So yeah. it was for growth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Fran, thanks for joining me this afternoon. If anyone wants to reach out to you and have a bit of a chat about what you're up to and, and explore some of these ideas you've shared with me, where can people find you? Where's, where's the best place to get in contact with you? Best place will be LinkedIn. Uh, I'm always on LinkedIn, so drop me a line, send me a, a personal message, happy to have a coffee and just to have a chat. Yep. We'll, um, we'll share your link to your profile or something in the show notes for anyone that's listening. So, Fran, as I said, appreciate you uh, you joining me this afternoon and, and good to chat with you for the first time. Thank you. Thanks for having me, James. Ah.